It's Thursday, October 16th, 2025, and we've got ourselves a day three slight risk of severe weather for the entire state of Arkansas. A little bit of Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Illinois as well. This is the severe weather threat that we've been talking about, and uh, it's getting closer. Okay, so we're starting to learn a little bit more about it. Our Saturday going into Sunday is going to be a little bit noisy over here in the mid-Mississippi River Valley. Now let's take a look at that CAPE, that convective available potential energy. Is it going to be in or out the wazoo? And it'll be pretty close, okay? We're going to have lots of that uh, thunderstorm fuel available for us over here Saturday evening, uh, right around Tulsa uh, and up to Springfield. And storms are going to try to form inside of that. Uh, and then they're going to eat that energy up and then get swept away uh, as the line of storms moves east. And I've talked about this a couple of times. If the storms wait longer into the day, like if it's actually 8 p.m. before storms start forming out here, the storms will be stronger. However, uh, if there's already storms that are are eating up this convective energy early in the day. By the time we get to 8 p.m., the storms will probably be somewhat weak and uh, will just be a traditional like line of gusty storms that we have to track. So we don't know for sure if we're going to have a big supercellular problem just yet, but just know that uh, that's one of the big things that we're watching out for as we go forward. Now, this all starts today with our front finally making it over the Rockies and producing some severe weather over here in Kansas and Nebraska and eastern portions of Colorado. We've got a marginal risk for places Places like North Platte and uh, McCook and Goodland and Lamar. Uh, this is mostly going to be for hail and wind. The tornado threat is quite low. The front continues to move east as we go into tomorrow, where we have a marginal risk of severe weather from Oklahoma City up towards Kansas City. Wichita and Tulsa are included in that. Once again, wind and hail are going to be our main threats here. And this is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. There's our storms that might cause some problems today. Uh, outside of this, we've got a ring of heavy rain that'll be hitting places like uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, back towards Wyoming and Montana. But once again, our main storm threat today is going to be down here. And hail, to me, is probably going to be the biggest thing. Uh, heavy rain, some flash flooding is going to be possible. And then as we go into the day tomorrow, there's a chance that we get some storms forming up between Oklahoma City and Wichita. But honestly, the HRRR doesn't see a, a big problem there, really. Uh, and then this front's going to continue to go down to the south and east and cause our storms uh, that we will see on Saturday. Now, what's interesting is the European model actually shows storms forming early in the morning on Saturday uh, and just being a big blob of rain by the time they get into Arkansas here Saturday afternoon. If this is actually what happens, then we'll have less of a severe weather threat. Don't get me wrong, we'll still have hail and wind and some sort of a tornado threat, but if we just have this big convective burst in the middle of the day and we don't have supercells, the, the severe weather threat goes down a lot. So let's root for the European model here. Uh, while it does show, you know, some storms still making it across the Mississippi River, River. It'll be stormy in Mississippi, you know, late uh, in the day on Saturday. It'll be stormy up there into Kentucky. Some heavy rain will be impacting places like Chicago. Uh, but this overall severe weather threat will be less if we actually see uh, early storm formation like this. One thing's for sure is that a lot of these places are going to get some heavy rain, some much needed rain, uh, but some of it might fall a little bit too fast. Okay, well, that's why we've got an excessive rainfall. Slight risk over here from just northeast of Little Rock up past Evansville. This includes Memphis, Cape Girardo, Clarksville, Tennessee, and Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is uh, some places where we could potentially see a couple inches of rain that falls too fast could cause some slight flooding here and there, so watch out for that. And we're about to dive so much deeper into that, but first, let's shout out today's awesome sponsor. Here's the thing, we keep a very close eye here on hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires, and even earthquakes. Because when danger's coming, information can be the difference between being ready and being blindsided. But our health, that's trickier. There's no Doppler radar are for your body. Just quiet signals, a nagging ache that won't fade, and the older I get, the more I realize that those little signs matter. I used to think I'll check it out later, but now, especially with three kids, later doesn't feel so safe anymore. And that's where today's sponsor, ZocDoc, comes in. ZocDoc is a completely free website where you can search and compare high-quality in-network doctors across nearly every specialty. We're talking about over 100,000 healthcare providers, and you can filter by insurance, location, medical needs, and reviews for from real patients. And the best part is, is right in the app, you can see their real-time availability, and you can instantly book an appointment online. ZocDoc appointments usually happen fast, within 24 to 72 hours, and sometimes even the same day. So if you've been putting off that checkup, don't do that anymore. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Ryan Hall, or click the link in the top of the description so you can find and book a top-rated doctor today. I wanna say thank you to ZocDoc for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back into the forecast. 
for the most part, it's going to be a rain that we can handle. And it, for the most part, it's going to be a good thing, right? Because a lot of these places are in a drought. A general uh, one to two inches of rain is going to be possible. There might be a couple places that squeeze out three inches. And uh, if three inches of rain falls too fast anywhere, that could cause some problems. All right, let's zoom out and take a look at the pattern across the continent. Once again, I just want to draw your attention to all of these storms that are hitting portions of Alaska over here and driving down towards the western coast of Canada. This is going to be a very amplified storm pattern that's going to cause a lot of problems in the BC area. Down into the Pacific Northwest, we're going to have several atmospheric river style events, lots of flooding, lots of uh, big time snow is going to be possible up there in the higher elevations. And downstream, it's just going to lead to a more wavy jet stream pattern for us here in the lower 48. So get ready for more cold blasts, more cold fronts, more brief warm bursts and storms in between. It's pretty typical for fall, but just look at the domino effect here of storm after storm after storm hitting the western side of Canada. That's a little bit more active than usual, okay? We've got a big time powerful jet swinging across the Pacific. We will feel the effects from this across the United States at some point, but for the most part, it's going to be up here in the Pacific Northwest. Get ready. It's about to get stormy. Also, notice our friend down here in the Caribbean. We're still watching this potential storm forming down here. I'm almost certain it's going to form, but I don't know where it's going, okay? Some models have it going over towards Mexico. Some of them have it going the complete opposite direction. Uh, this one uh, in particular shows it pretty much dancing around in the same area. Look at that. It just kind of sits there uh, south and west of Puerto Rico for several days, and then it rockets off to the north. One thing that I am starting to become confident in is that it's probably not going to hit the United States. Because we have all of this amplified storm pattern going on over here, we're going to have so many troughs swinging through. Those are like baseball bats uh, for uh, tropical systems. And if a tropical system comes through, there's going to be a baseball bat ready to swat it out of the way. Um, and that's going to be our saving grace more than likely. But uh, as far as the Caribbean goes, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Lesser Antilles, we're definitely going to be watching y'all because the storm obviously could still impact you and uh, we'll be tracking this as we get more data and more information all right so we've got a lot of weather going on on earth but also up in space check this out we've had a little spurt of coronal mass ejections okay so little sun farts here uh, pointed directly at earth so on this little graphic uh, this is the sun uh, and this is earth right and you can see that uh, some plasma some space stuff has been ejected out from the sun and there's going to be a pocket of it that hits earth directly tonight uh, and this might cause uh, up to a g2 geomagnetic storm a solar storm and that might cause some problems with stuff like gps and uh, radios and stuff like that but it also may cause uh, the auroras to be uh, visible a little bit farther south than usual so if you live up north uh, look up tonight you might see something interesting there it's nothing crazy it's nothing you know out of the ordinary but certainly uh, we've had an active space weather situation over the past couple of months and uh, this is just another one of those instances where we've got to pay attention to this and how cool is this graphic by the way I think we'll start showing this more often uh, whenever we've got space weather to track. But yeah, G2 is going to cause the auroras to be visible in like Washington and Maine. Okay, we're not talking about Missouri or Florida for this one. Uh, but, you know, that does happen sometimes. So I'll let you know when it does. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.